So, when did humans first start ripping each other apart in the interest of scientific pursuits? Today, we're going to jump back into our series on human experimentation throughout history by looking at experimentation in the ancient world. As an important forward, as with all the videos in this series, we will only be looking at experimentation that at least on a surface level was justified by science or undergone with at least the intent of gathering information, regardless of how benign that may have been. Anything else is torture and we'll be steering clear of that for now. Anyway. Contrary to popular belief, human experimentation was exceedingly taboo throughout the entirety of the ancient world. To experiment on a human, living or dead, was just about unheard of, with the Romans even going as far as to outlaw it across the entirety of their empire. However, with all that said, we'll be starting about as far back as we can go, while still calling it human experimentation. So one of the birthplaces of modern medicine, and one of the greatest learning hubs that history has ever produced, Alexandria. We'll be taking a look at some of the medical experiments that happened in Alexandria and specifically cycled around one person, Herophilos, or otherwise Herophilos of Chalcodon. Alexandria, founded in 331 BC by, who would have guessed it, Alexander the Great, would quickly see itself accelerate to one of the greatest learning hubs that the ancient world had ever seen, and as a result would attract some of the greatest minds the ancient world ever produced, including our central character, Herophilos of Chalcodon. Herophilos is often remembered as being one of the grandfathers of anatomy, and for his contributions to medicine as a whole. However, we won't be covering that so much here, there are better videos on it. I'll try and link some below. Instead, we're going to be looking at the more gruesome aspect of Herophilos. Now, Herophilos made his name in Alexandria by performing vivisections on cadavers and studying the inner workings of the human body. He would often perform these vivisections to large crowds, live for all to see, with the crowd hungry for the gruesome spectacle. While already grim enough for its time, it is also reported by some sources that Herophilos would perform these same procedures that he performed to the crowds on cadavers, in private, on captured prisoners sent to him by the Ptolemaic kings. Over 600 poor souls were said to have met their end this way, being cut open and studied live by Herophilos. It's worth stating in the interest of fairness that these reports are disputed. However, we do see multiple reports speculating on medical experiments being performed within Alexandria on live prisoners throughout the ancient world. And I'm a firm believer that where there's smoke, there's fire. That about wraps us up on Herophilos today. Um, I'm sorry it's not much more for you guys, but um, he's, he's kind of, he's a difficult man to find reports on. And quite frankly, there was not a great deal of human experimentation going on in the ancient world. But don't worry, we'll be revisiting this topic next, fast forwarding to Mithridates, the Poison King. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it guys, it really helps the channel when you do. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next one.